Thank you, Vish. Thank you, Arjun and everybody at Special for having me over. Uh, to start with uh, a typical Special kind of introduction, my name is Subbu. I'm a textile engineer. I've known uh, Vish for several years, as he mentioned. Oh, the slide is already up. So I'm going to ask you guys to think for one moment about all these devices placed on this table. I'm sure most of us can't live without it. And if I ask a show of hands, everybody is going to raise their hands if they've ever used or are having one of these items on them, right? Now, all this was achieved with human ingenuity. For the last few hundred years, we have seen science come together, become miniaturized, and to make products that we use like water, right? But this has happened with evolution of science, which man identified. I am a person who believes there are no invention. Everything is a discovery. And man figures out what is available in nature, deciphers the knowledge, and makes these products. So we are in the business of biotech. And I want to make a comparable to everyday items that you use to what biotech can really do. While we are so amazed by this technology, we can speak to each other from across the world, even into space. All the companies Special has invested uh, really is like hair raising. I shouldn't say that, but I want you to compare that with a simple, modest earthworm. The technology in an earthworm far supersedes anything that man's ingenuity has ever produced. A hummingbird its ability to fly, change movement, direction, no flight, no fan, can never do that even once. Have you seen a plane kind of flapping its wings? Never. So we have more than 600 million years of evolution, billions of species, but somehow our relationship with nature is extracted. I mean, look at the devastation we have been causing, all in the name of human ingenuity, to feed ourselves, to clothe ourselves. I mean, it hurts me. I'm sure any one of you who've been in Bangalore seen all the trees cut away to make way for human life. And we are polluting like never before. We'll soon not be known as a blue planet, but the black planet, right? And I want to bring that into the human developed code, the zeros and ones, the magic with which we can do all the computing. And then compare that to what nature has to give us, the genetic code. It has four variables, five variables, not a zero and a one, and it's bound by two strands. Just imagine the possibilities. How many different possibilities? The most important thing I want to talk here is that everything around us, anything living, including a bacteria on your skin right now, has the same code. And some of the products man makes has always been kind of depreciated. Compare that to nature. They build two, they grow two, but they are regenerative. We could learn a lot from nature and build our future, and that's what we at Firmbox are trying to do. And the question for any layman is how? How do we do this? We can grow food, we can eat it, but the answer lies in nature itself. And this answer has been getting evolved over time, and thanks to the AI, ML, computing capabilities, we are doing it much faster. We are able to replace traditional methods of manufacturing by using microbes and enzymes. Yes, the very tiny microbes which you can hardly see. So all the science we do in Firmbox and in biotech, it will touch almost everything we do and need in life. So when Vishay said like, take it away to space, I said, no, we are on the ground. We address necessities, right? And we can do almost anything. I want you to take a look at the next two slides. If I've missed something, please add it. So even if it's an electric bike, we could make tires for you, we can make seats for you. And we are building on collaborations. And our first collaborator is actually nature. And I'm so proud to say that. Because what better than riding on the evolution that's been around for so many years. So what exactly do we do? We take the gene, which is common to all of us, the code, and like you develop software, you can actually redesign the gene or copy a gene from nature from a plant or an animal 
like say insulin was made several decades ago in yeast but before that it came from pigs so they would actually take the pig pancreas extract insulin and give it to humans of course it's not safe so what they did later was they took the gene of a human being which made insulin and put it into yeast and instead of making beer it made insulin and now we can make milk which comes from cows who needs the hooves and the tails if you can make casing we can make spider silk we can make bulletproof vest uh, vest we can make protective gear for space rockets there's just absolute no end to it so what we do is we take this gene plug it in like a software patch and put it into a fermenter just like we make beer and make product our focus areas is not so much in the biopharma because it takes too long but we are in the biomaterial space flavors fragrances colors 70% of all the clothes you wear are actually coming from petrochemicals i've heard people who wear cottons say hey this is natural but do you realize we put urea and dap into the ground which comes from petrochemical so it's as complex and as simple and as exhaustive as that at firm box we are not doing this alone we are connecting the various knowledge available in various institutes people researchers and we're bringing this together i always argue with my team we don't have to invent something new like apple was the greatest example where they didn't invent anything but they bring brought it together over the years we figured out what not to do we figured out what to do in terms of product strategy we have learned how to do it using technology and we also know when to do it because not everything in biotech is viable today if you say we're going to make food right now it's 20 dollars a kilogram the engineering needs to catch up and that's why we are focusing on the biomaterials for the last 20 years me and my team though i am a textile engineer have been breaking and rebuilding nature's code we made enzymes which cleaned up wastewater we made products which came from animals made medicine safer this is in my previous organization and then i felt should this be the future revolution we need to have a collaborative model in 1974 vaclav really said that when the age of synthetic bio comes it's a challenge but fast forward 2023 it's going so fast the rate at which we are evolving our science and the products we can make is just mind blowing so we could do a lot of good and we could use every technology that is right here in this facility to make biology happen actually when the presentations were happening i was like i want to talk to that company now i want to talk to this company now because now we are building constructs using ai we are using robotics to make better clones we are using engineering to make manufacturing and we can even send food to space space station needs food and we could be the solution to do that this slide already wish has stolen from me but what i'm trying to say here is that it's happening too fast and we don't need to change everything but we could change one time at one product at a time what is synthetic biology doing to this world we are not making new products we are making products which were there in nature we are actually replacing supply chain we are going to do away with forest produce do you know the fragrance you wear is coming from pine trees which they cut down 20 years ago so we could replace that supply chain coming from forests we could replace products which came from animals not just for food but for making biomaterials for making medicines we can replace products which come from fossil fuels and and we all know it's running out so we are in the business of replacing supply chains and i think more and more companies coming on board using the technology that every other science uh, field is developing is going to have a touch point with biotech and that's why being invested in synthetic biology is really awesome i let this slide play out so that you know what's the impact we can create one is to do a viable business the other is to do it sustainably and to create impact like for me this is my second journey and i don't want to go out without being a company which has created global impact so what's happening in the world around us the wave is just picking up and why is it happening all in the last few years it's like an industrial revolution most of us as we think of ai robotics computing are missing this space of our evolution and over time 
like in case of space tech, somebody made space tech and eventually it became a toaster, they say. That's happening now. Down the road, we're going to make food. And right now, the opportunity is in the middle. The VCs are not missing out either. Somehow they smell it before it happens. And they've been funding, and they're very much behaving like any deep tech investment that you've seen. And honestly, we could create a really great impact. But then we need to know where do we invest? What is the opportunity? In fact, when Vish and I were talking, and I said, I don't have a product in mind, but I have a business which can enable these products. And that's what we are in. There's room for technology development on clones, manufacturing, final product formulation, and eventual delivery for healthcare, food, biomaterials, and anything else. One of the questions which said that I should be prepared for because somebody is going to ask, um, and I think I'm going to preempt that. He asked me, why did you take funds from us? Uh, in my previous organization, I have raised funds from two companies, given them an exit. And when I was about to raise this fund, I was surprised. We had 42 different investors who reached out saying they would like to invest. And the first person I spoke to was Vish, and I have only one reason for that. No offense. I think they don't know what they're investing in. <laughs> I, right? Like in the Bible, you need to pray. Like, I want God to forgive them for doing what they're doing. But honestly, that has a sense because the future is unknown. If you go to a user and say, what do you want tomorrow? He's going to think of incremental signs. He's not going to think of what he hasn't already related to. I think Special is really special because they're willing to invest in companies on an imagination, on a true story of a dream. Having interacted with many, many funds and fund managers, I can tell you the investing community needs to think first that they are people and they're working with people. And I think once they believe they want to bring change, it will happen. And I think that's what I've enjoyed with them, and I hope I will continue to do that. Thank you very much.